Okay, coming back from the wrecking yard this morning. Um, check engine light came on after coming to a stop. Engine stumbled a little bit, uh, just dipped below 500 RPMs and wanted to die a little bit. Check engine light, as I said, came on. Um, driving right now, everything drives fine. Um, I'm assuming I'm gonna read the code when I get home. So I'll do the video on reading the code. But um, I think it's more than likely a mass airflow sensor. It's been minus 30 here for a couple of days Celsius. So um, it's very possible that uh, a mass airflow sensor at the end of its life, uh, subjected to that kind of cold temperature, will give up the ghost a little quicker. Uh, it's also possible with the amount of ice built up on the front of my car from these crappy driving, uh, there's possible that there's a blockage in the air intake um, that's causing this. And I'm coming to a stop right now and you'll see the stumble. There, there we go. Ugh, almost died. So anyway, uh, I'm going to finish this up when I get home. Okay, it's about three or four minutes later and the car is really not liking me. Uh, when I come to a stop, it is dying. Um, I've remedied that by, just before I come to a stop, putting it in neutral and coasting the last few feet. Uh, and then there's no uh, drag from the torque converter on the engine, so it's not completely dying. And then just sitting in neutral at the light, putting it in gear when I have to go. Um, -da 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 -da. Um, not a recommended thing to do to put your car in neutral and coast it. Don't coast this, these cars in neutral for a long distance. I'm coasting about five feet, the last three or four, five feet before I come to a stop. Don't uh, you know put your car in neutral and coast under any circumstance. Um, this is, I mean, it's absolutely fine to do this, but you know for regular driving, don't coast in neutral. It's not a good idea. But um, you know, like I said, it's this is like a couple of feet. It's not going to hurt anything. But, um, anyway, I'll let you, actually, you know what, I think I have my OBD in the trunk. I think I have my OBD reader. I read a friend's car a couple weeks ago, and I think my reader is still in the trunk. So, um, back to you in a minute. Okay, on C-Classes from, I think the C-Class was always OBD2 compliant. So, um, anyway, I'm going to read the OBD2 codes. And the OBD2... Yeah. <laughs> slot is down uh, basically halfway up your shin uh, under your your uh, right foot under your throttle foot there is a little door pop that open and I'm gonna plug my OBD reader in which way does it go that way okay Okay, plugged in, turn the car to on without starting, and let's see what this guy says. Can I turn that light off or not? No, I can't. P100, Master Volume Airflow Circuit. No kidding. <laughs> let's see if there's any more. Take air temperature circuit, which is airflow. So, mass airflow sensor. <sighs> Lovely. So, I'm gonna have to order another one of those. Um, let me see if I can erase this code. No, it is. It's still sensing it, so can't even erase the code. No, 
completely toast. Okay. So, mass airflow sensor. Um, that's all I have to say about that, really. <laughs> I gotta replace the damn mass airflow sensor. Um, the check engine light is not gonna go out because um, the mass airflow is gone no matter what. You can't reset the code on this with. Uh, if it's gone, it's gone. It's gonna read it completely. You can't even reset the code. So, um, I've already checked the wiring under the hood to the uh, MAF sensor before I got home to read this. Uh, everything seems fine. There's no obstructions in the air box. Um, so, um, you know what, for the fun of it, now that I know I need one and I'm going to be replacing it, I'm going to see if I can clean this sucker just for the heck of it. I'm going to pull it out and take a look. Anyway, I'll be back.